The following program is a production of WLRN Public Television. South Florida is one of the oldest human habitation sites in North America. And that makes the Miami story so interesting as one of the oldest habitation sites and also one of the newest major American cities. We are now documenting fully the fact that the Dequesta Indians and their ancestors were residing on the Miami River for at least 3,000 years. We have now found evidence of this long, continuous occupation right up to the point of European contact in the 16th century. The Dequesta are Native Americans who resided in southeastern Florida. We know their name because when the Spanish arrived in South Florida in the 16th century, this is the name that they were told. We know for sure that Ponce de Leon was in Biscayne Bay in July 1513. And in his journal, he wrote, reached Tequesta, Chequesta with a C. And we know that the Spanish tend to name habitation sites after the chief. Now, we don't know for sure that Ponce de Leon came ashore, but it makes sense. He's the one that called it Chequesta. This site is a window into the Dequesta. This window is giving us a wonderful view of prehistoric life up to 3,000 years ago. By some miracle, no one has ever built on the site of what they are uncovering. And uh, that's extraordinary when you think about the history of of the United States and the fact that people were choosing to live on the north bank of the Miami River that long ago. No one really who is involved in archaeology in a serious way has any doubt as to the importance of the site. This is a rare opportunity, a window into Miami's past that probably will never be seen again. Uh, we're finding not only tens of thousands of artifacts and cultural remains, but over 2,000 post holes cut into the rock is this huge area of circles and linear alignments of these post holes, giving us a very rare glimpse of what a prehistoric Dequesta town may have looked like. And the post holes that are chalked would have held posts in the circular pattern that you can follow all the way around. It would have been a, a house of some sort. We have, at this point, 10 circles that all look uh, relatively similar. The holes have similar diameter, similar depth. Where they're excavating there is interesting because as the elevation drops, you get to this tidal zone. And in the tidal zone, you have probably the best intact midden on the property, which means we have the best prehistoric material coming from there. You can see it's deep, rich, black, organic dirt. And the reason it's rich and organic like that is it's, well, it's all the plant matter, all the animal remains, the shellfish, the fish. And it builds up over time, and it creates this really dark, black, organic material. There's a lot of material in there, a lot of artifacts, a lot of ceramic, a lot of animal bone. Animal bone is mostly turtle and shark and fish. Growing up in Miami, I spent my childhood exploring the Miami River and becoming very uh, intimate with it. This pottery is from the, probably the Glaze One period. In seventh grade, I had asked the teacher, uh, who were the first people in Miami, the earliest people? And her answer was the Seminoles. So I thought, okay, well, that makes sense. They're Indians, Native Americans. A friend came to class one day with a box of artifacts and he starts showing pieces of pottery and uh, this beautiful ax made out of a green stone. And I said, well, where, where did you find that? He said, well, I found it on the Miami River. That began a, a lifetime interest in the archeology span because what he showed me demonstrated that there were much more ancient people in Miami than what uh, I had ever even conceived of. And we now know through the archeological record that the Dequesta were a people that resided in southeast Florida from what is currently Boca Raton to the north, southward to Key West, and westward through Everglades National Park. They occupied a major part of the peninsula and focused their principal town at the mouth of the Miami River because of its confluence with Biscayne Bay. 
This was the ideal location for human habitation. Not only did it provide a, a transportation corridor through the river going directly into the Everglades, but it also provided access directly into the bay to what is now Miami Beach, Fisher Island, Virginia Key. Uh, they were a canoe culture in the sense that they were very dependent on dugout canoes. I'm sure if, if we were looking at a Dequesta today, we would find the males were very strong and powerful chest and shoulders from all the canoeing they were doing. They were able to exploit tremendous resources from the reefs offshore as well as the interior Everglades and the Miami River. The fishing for the Dequesta was actually quite sophisticated in some ways in the sense that they were not just throwing a line into the, into the water, but they actually had uh, nets. They would stretch the nets across the Miami River with the current changing. They were really very adept at taking advantage of the local environment. They had fishing wares from what we can tell by simply constructing uh, with probably wood and netting and funneling a fish going into a particular place, they could just seal that off and actually keep the fish alive if they wish for as long as they needed to. Also, uh, hunting was very important. And we find lots of deer bones. We find raccoons, we find squirrels, we find uh, even small rats, reptiles, alligators, snakes. What we don't find often are panthers, bear, wolves, and of course these are the predators. These are at the top of the food chain and probably not very good to eat and probably very dangerous to hunt for that matter. The Dequesta and the Indians in general of South Florida were one of the few native peoples in North America who developed a complex socially stratified society without the advantage of agriculture. And the reason is because the maritime resources were so extensive that they were able to actually develop this culture just simply based on fishing. The Spanish arrived in the 16th century. They're greeted with tremendous hostility. It's the reason they're so hostile in part is because they've already gotten word from Cuba and the Bahamas from those native people that when the Europeans arrive, you better be ready because it isn't going to be a walk in the park. So this very combative relationship continues for at least 100 or more years. But eventually, the Spanish contact through efforts of Pedro Menendez, who was the founder of St. Augustine, arrives in Miami in 1567 convinces the Dequesta to allow him to put a fort with a Spanish mission at the mouth of the river. Well, that enterprise doesn't last very long because there's a warfare and hostilities break out. That attempt at creating a mission at the mouth of the river uh, occurs again in 1743, again with uh, equally disastrous results. The Spanish, they believe, built behind the native village. So if you think of Second Avenue, of course, it didn't exist, as a dividing line in a little bit of a way, and we don't know what's under Second Avenue, they did find Spanish habitation sites. We have found archaeological evidence of Spanish occupation of the, at the mouth of the Miami River by way of numerous uh, European artifacts, including, from the mission, several bells. The changes that occurred through time is that because of trade, because of the products that the Europeans are bringing, particularly the Spanish, metal tools, rum, which was the big disintegrating factor in native societies all over the New World, that we have, in effect, the American Holocaust. All over the New World, millions of Native Americans disappear. They die initially as a result of slavery, but most of them as a result of diseases brought by Europeans. Particularly smallpox. It really ran wild in the Native population. This big disintegration of Native culture is now filled by the Seminoles and what became the Miccosukees who come into South Florida and find themselves in direct combat with these other remnant people. The last remaining Tequesta asked for asylum in Cuba. They intermarried with the Cubans. So in many ways, we may have some of the genes of these original people back in South Florida today with the arrival of the Cubans. Most of the site will disappear except for two of the circles that will be preserved. If I had my 
100% Druthers, there's no question I would save the whole site and make it open to the public and explain the story. The developers agreed to expose uh, what they believe is the most important site inside of a building. Two large, very distinct circles, circular features, will be preserved and interpreted for the public. The site is not only has been recognized as being something uh, very unusual and unique, but probably uh, able to be listed on the National Register of Historic Places uh, and even as a national landmark. The best idea that we could come up with, because we couldn't get a view during the day that we were happy with because of all the visual noise, so we thought if we could enhance that with lights, this was my idea, uh, but I first looked at electrical lighting and other temporary systems and it was just not practical. One of our workers came up with the idea of using glow sticks. We think it's going to be 100% effective. The purpose of this drone flight is to capture a image that reveals all of this Decasta town in one shot, one view. This is going to give us a bird's eye view of a Decasta village in a way that has never been seen by people in the last 1,500 years. This is something we can't do on the ground. We can, you know, we can reconstruct this with maps and so forth. That's what we're doing. But be, being able to go up 500 feet above the ground and seeing this for the first time, perhaps similar to the way it might have looked in terms of the, the alignment uh, in Dequesta times, this is something that's never been done. Wow, that's great. This, in fact, is the first time in archaeology in North America that this kind of night flight uh, revealing a, a structures as well as the uh, actual uh, plan of a, of a prehistoric town is being revealed. This aerial view is, is going to be one of our best records of what this site actually looks like before it disappears. <laughs>